Hey guys, happy Sunday. Sorry, I'm just cleaning off my camera. Um, I'm not going to sing today because <clears throat> I'm sick. So I'm just going to talk about some stuff. And let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty, and Jesus Christ, the Lamb who was slain for our sins. Lord, I pray you bless everyone who watches these videos with peace and love and happiness. Lord, please help us understand the wisdom and knowledge that we retain today. And please protect and help and bless and comfort and love and heal Kim and the children and my Aunt Jenny from her stroke and Lord please make us all whole I am tired of not being well and I'm sure there are other people out there like this too Jesus just please heal us you are Jehovah Rapha you are the God of healing. You are Jehovah Jireh, the God of providing. And Lord, I, pr I pray that you provide for the healing we need. And I provide, pray that you make us whole, Lord. And we love you so much, Lord. We thank you for dying on the cross for our sins and for everything you do for us and bless us with and for this beautiful planet you've given us Lord and these beautiful sunsets and sunrises and we praise you for it all Jesus we praise you for dying on the cross and we praise you for giving us freedom and eternal life and we love you and we pray now these things in your name Jesus amen okay so um actually I kind of want to sing I kind of do. I don't feel that bad right now. Okay, maybe we'll sing. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, we're going to sing Crowder in the House. And I love this song. Okay. This place is so much fun. We bowled, and Dad was all like, I want some dumb bowling trophy, so I'm gonna win. Okay, ready? Hi, cherry berry pudding and pie. Good morning, has it been a long night? Maybe been a long year, maybe been a hard life, maybe you're not alright. If you got a little red in your eyes, you've come to the right place. People like you, people like me, this is where we all find grace. Come on now, bet you wanna sing hallelujah. Bet you're saying amen Can't help but celebrate being born again Somebody who loves you Is waiting at the door Oh, it's home sweet home here In the house of the Lord Take a load off you're about to find your rest It's a crazy world out there Got some hope right here Out of the wilderness If you need water for your soul Well, you're in the right place Doesn't matter if you're rich or poor Whoever you are This is where we all find grace Come on now Bet you'll want to sing hallelujah Bet you'll sing amen can't help but celebrate being born again Somebody who loves you 
is waiting at the door. Oh, it's home sweet home here in the house of the Lord. Bring your heart in, bring your burden. You can lay him down at the door. There is no fear. You belong here. Step into the house of the Lord. Bring your heartache. Bring your burden. You can lay him down at the door. Ain't it so clear? You belong here. Step into the house of the Lord. Bet you want to sing hallelujah. Bet you say amen. Can't help but celebrate being born again. Somebody who loves you is waiting at the door. Oh, it's home sweet home here in the house of the Lord. Bring your heartache, bring your burden. You can lay him down at the door. Ain't it so clear? I love that song. Also, I want to say another real quick prayer. Jesus, I pray that you heal me and Cherry and Shanita at work. Lord, all three of us are going through such a hard time. Lord, make us whole, Jesus. Heal our wounds. Help us get better, Lord. And please bless all three of us. I pray and ask this in your name too, Jesus. Amen. Sorry, Chair Bear. I kind of just called you out there that you're my coworker. <laughs> I don't think you'll care. Actually, I know you won't. Okay, so I finally got through Acts. And I read the first chapter of Romans. And I was like, oh my gosh, there is so so much stuff just in these 32 verses about human nature and our relationship with the Lord. And so I didn't know if I wanted to do this lesson today on the beginning part, like the wonderful news of the Lord how we go from receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith. Um, so I'm just going to read. I'm just going to kind of. Okay. I'm going to start in verse 7, which is which the Passion Translation right writer moved to verse two before verse two so it says i write to all so romans 1 7 i write to all as beloved chosen ones in rome for you are all so called as holy ones may his joyous grace and total well-being flow flowing from our father and the lord jesus christ rest upon you and then i want to go to verse three for the gospel is all about God's son. As a man, he descended from David's royal lineage, but as the mighty son of God, he was raised up from the dead and miraculously set apart with a display of triumphant power supplied by the spirit of holiness. And now Jesus is our Lord and Messiah. Through him, grace cascaded into us, empowering us with the gift of apostleship, so that we can win people from every nation into the obedience that comes from faith to bring honor to his name. And you are among the chosen ones who are called to belong to Jesus, the anointed one. I feel so grateful and special that the Lord chose me to be on his side. Because remember, he traded nations for us. I don't know who he was trading with, I assume. The devil, the dirt bag. Okay. And then I want to skip down to 16. And it says, the gospel of power. I refuse to be ashamed of the wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Christ. For I am thrilled to preach that everyone who believes is saved, the Jew first, and then people everywhere. This gospel unveils the continual revelation of God's righteousness, a perfect righteousness given to us when we believe, and it moves us from receiving life through faith to the power of living by faith. This is what the scripture means when it says, 
We are right with God through life-giving faith. Okay, then it goes to you. So all this goodness, and then it, it skips, doesn't skip. It's perfect. It's the Bible. God reveals his wrath. Okay, so it goes from all that nice stuff we just read to this. So verse 18. For God in heaven unveils his holy anger, breaking forth against every form of sin, both toward ungodliness that lives in hearts and evil actions. For the wickedness of human humanity deliberately smothers the truth and keeps people from acknowledging the truth about God. In reality, the truth of God is known instinctively, for God has embedded this knowledge inside every human heart. So our DNA is imprinted with the knowledge of God. Okay, so verse 20. So opposition to truth cannot be excused on the basis of ignorance because from the creation of the world, the invisible qualities of God's nature have been made visible, which is like the earth, the, the trees and plants and animals, all the beauty on the earth and the sky and the everything, you know? Okay. So God's nature have been made visible, such as his eternal power and transcendence. He has made his wonderful attributes easily perceived for seeing the visible makes us understand the invisible. So then this leaves everyone without an excuse. In verse 21, throughout human history, the fingerprints of God were upon them, yet they refused to honor him as God or even be thankful for his kindness. Instead, they entertained corrupt and foolish thoughts about what God was like. This left them with nothing but misguided hearts steeped in moral darkness. Although claiming to be wise, they were in fact shallow fools, for only a fool would trade the unfading splendor of the immortal God to worship the fading image of other humans, idols made to look human or look like people, animals, birds, and even creeping reptiles. This is why God lifted off his restraining hand and let them have full expression of their sin, of their sinful and shameful desires. They were given over to moral depravity dishonoring their bodies by sexual perversion among themselves, all because they traded the truth of God for a lie. They worshiped and served the things God made rather than the things, or rather than the God who made all things. Glory and praises to him forever and ever. Amen. And then down to verse 28. I'm pretty much reading all of Romans 1. Okay, verse 28. And because they thought it was worthless to embrace the true knowledge of God, God gave them over to a worthless mindset to break all rules of proper conduct. Their sinful lives became full of every kind of evil, wicked schemes, greed, and cruelty. Their hearts overflowed with jealous cravings and with conflict and strife, which drove them into hateful arguments and murder. They are deceitful liars full of hostility. They are gossips who love to spread malicious slander. With inflated egos, they hurl hateful insults at God, yet they are nothing more than arrogant boasters. They are rebels against their parents and totally immoral. They are senseless, faithless, ruthless, heartless, and completely merciless. Although they are fully aware of God's laws and proper order and knowing that those who do all these things deserve to die, Yet they still go headlong into darkness, encouraging others to do the same and applauding them when they do. So when I read this, I was thinking like, what if I was born? The only place I could think of would be Antarctica, where I have no knowledge. And let's say, I don't know, my parents died or something and I was there by myself. So I had no knowledge of God or religions, or false gods, or anything like that, I wonder what I would start thinking or believing in my heart, since the Lord says it's instinctively written on our hearts, uh, the knowledge of him. And, and like, would I start 
would I start worshiping the sun that brought light to me every day or the moon that brought light to me at night? Would I start worshiping, uh, I guess there'd be penguins down there in Antarctica. You know, what would I do if I had no knowledge of Jesus or God um, growing up at all? And then I remembered when Paul was walking through Rome, he was looking at all the shrines to all the false gods and and all the false deities. And he saw the one shrine that was empty and it said it was to the unknown God. So it's like throughout history, because we can see all the wonderful things God made for us, but we can't see him. It's like, we start make, making man-made things to worship and then creating man-made religions around them. And so I wondered myself what would happen if I were to have no knowledge of the Lord and, and grow up like what I would do. And and then and then like at the at the end of Romans, it is, I mean, the devil is just always scheming. He's ruthless. He won't give up to try and get us away from heaven. And I asked myself this question too, like, why are we so weak to these worldly desires or um, to sins of the flesh? And, and it's, I think it's because we can't see the Lord and God, you know, he doesn't show himself to us. We just have to believe it in our hearts. And, and I was also thinking it's because the world applauds weakness when we choose the world lies over the truth, which is Jesus. And so I, I've been reading over Romans one over and over and over trying to figure out like what I wanted to say today and what it all comes down to is that we need to make apostles and disciples of all nations so that we can go out there and tell everyone the truth about who God is, which it, and which is through Jesus. And then the Lord will come back to us and then people will stop worshiping things made of wood and stone and humans. And it also got me thinking... Why do the Catholics make statues of Jesus? Like, is Jesus okay with that? Because it's just stone. And I don't know. I just, Romans 1 is a very, very interesting chapter in the Bible. And I just wanted to talk to it, talk to you guys about it. But what I got out of it, and which is the most important thing, is to preach the word of God everywhere so that everyone knows who who built this earth for us, who gave us all this wonderful food, who gave us all these wonderful animals and everything, the fish in the sea, the birds in the air. And it's so important for us to teach people to worship the God who made these things for us instead of worshiping the things made by God. And... Of course, it's hard for us because we, as humans, have to see to believe. But apparently, we piss God off so bad that he's like, meh, I'm done trying to hold them back. I'm done trying to restrain them and keep them holy. They just want to go live like the world. And when the world applauds you for living like the world, it makes you want to continue to live a life full of sin. And... That's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. So go out and make disciples of all nations so we can all go to heaven together. Okay, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, thank you so much for all the marvelous, beautiful things that you've given us, this earth, this everything, Lord. And help us understand in our hearts that that's how loving you are. You gave us such a beautiful planet with beautiful animals, beautiful seas, beautiful, everything is beautiful on here, Lord. And help us translate that into the knowledge that that 
is what you are. You, you are so gracious and so merciful that you made all this beautiful stuff for us to enjoy down here. And as long as we believe in your son, Jesus, Lord, we will have everlasting life. And we thank you for that. And if anyone online is watching and wants to receive the Lord, Jesus, if wants to receive you, Jesus, online, guys, repeat after me. Jesus, I receive you. I can't see you, but I believe in my heart that you are the Lord of my life and that we all serve the God who made this earth. And we want you to be the ruler of our lives and continually refresh our souls with your holiness, Jesus. And we repent of our sins and we want to change and be new people in you, Jesus. And... We thank you, and every time someone comes to the Lord, we know that you and the angels in heaven are celebrating. We just love you so much, Jesus, and we thank you for all that you do, and we pray and ask all these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. So be it. Okay. God bless. I love you guys. And if you did pray that prayer, just start talking to the Lord. Just start talking to Jesus, and you'll find that he is there waiting for you, waiting for you at the door, waiting to open the door for you. Okay, I love you guys. God bless.